Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to Movie Goodness, where we examine life through cinema here on the KB Radio Network. I am your host, Kevin Reed, and welcome to the show, everybody. This episode, will we, we're going to focus on Star Wars, and not the film side to a degree. We're going to talk about some films, uh, but this isn't going to be your typical Movie Goodness episode where we... Uh, discuss a topic and then review a film related to that topic. But today, I wanted to talk about the state of Star Wars, if you will, and where it stands right now as far as pop culture. Because you go back to the original Star Wars film, uh, A New Hope, it pretty much was the starting point, the jumping off point of geekdom. Of, of nerd culture, of pop culture, period. You know, uh, Star Wars was something that everybody gravitated to. It didn't matter what walk of life you were, um, no matter what race you were, no matter what creed you are, uh, uh, whatever. Everybody connected to Star Wars in some shape, form, or fashion. Whether you were deep into the lore where you can name every single planet in the, <laughs> in the solar system or... Uh, every character and you can tell who shot first in the original version that is and all this other good stuff or you just a casual watcher of the films you know if it was on it was on um you in some shape form or fashion have witnessed star wars you watched some piece of star wars lore and for years we didn't get Star Wars films, you know. It started back in 1977, and we, we've been on this little gap that took place after Revenge, oh, not Revenge, but Return of the Jedi, until we got The Phantom Menace back in 1999. Oh, was it 99? Yeah, it was 99. I don't know. My mind wanted to say 2000, but in 1999. And, you know, the prequel... Uh, trilogy and that has been diverse I mean, even though as years um has passed and people had time to kind of sit on it they're not as hated as they were when they came out you know I, i've kind of turned the corner on a lot of my vitriol towards the prequel trilogy even though i still have my problems with it but if you know if you ever go back and watch the original trilogy you can find problems with that as well you know it wasn't perfect but it, it was certainly better than, <laughs> than the prequel trilogy but i i finally remember um in 1999 when the phantom menace came out and the, the phantom the craziness that took place people going to see movies or buying a ticket to see movies just to see the trailer of the phantom menace after the trailer ended, they left. They didn't even watch the movie that they paid to see. Uh, it was the craziest thing, but that's how much people were excited for Star Wars. And despite the films not being great, they were successful. People still ran out and saw them. After this uh, prequel trilogy, we had a big gap as well. But then George Lucas, the creator of all of all of this wouldn't be here without George Lucas. And uh, he sold Lucasfilm to Disney for billions. I forgot how much it was, but he made a killing. <laughs> and that's where you can kind of pinpoint where the problem came in. You know, and I, bring, I brought up the prequel trilogies for that reason. George Lucas, he helmed all three of those films that, you know, unlike he did for the original trilogy where he did direct a new hope, but return of the Jedi and empire strike back had two different directors. He helmed all three of the prequel trilogies. And that's where people found the problem with the, uh, uh, dialogue with, uh, special effects. And it was just looking cartoonish at points with the visual effects, you know, and, the acting was bad uh, <laughs> due to his direction and all this other stuff. And so people were mad and upset that he directed those films. And so when we got the new trilogy, 
that was released with uh jj abrams directing the force awakens and jj abrams at that time was the hottest thing going you know he he was successful with reviving the mission impossible franchise with mission impossible 3 he basically saved that franchise and he went on to direct two of the star trek films uh well the reboots kind of and those films were well received not so much into darkness but i i can make an argument that that was a that was a good film. It just wasn't, you know, wrath of kind like they were trying to do, but regardless. And so he was hot at the moment. So him diving into star Wars was an exciting thing. And I think everybody, um, or at least most people enjoyed force awakens. I did. I loved force awakens. I thought it was a callback to, uh, a new hope. Um, you can make an argument that it was a carbon copy of a new hope as well. But I, I, I still loved it for what it was left a lot of questions. We got two different films after that. Now, Ryan Johnson, he directed the last Jedi. And this was the first film that I think universally people were kind of like, Oh, <laughs> it was, it was like, Oh, I mean, the movie wasn't bad, but as far as Star Wars, you know, with Luke and Leia and, uh, you know, and, and you have, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's a, it's a thing that that movie just never, ever clicked, at least with me. I do. I did not enjoy that, but I did enjoy it better than the rise of Skywalker. I've seen that movie once. I've seen all of the Star Wars films multiple times except rise of Skywalker. I I've only seen it once at the theater when it came out and that was good. For, that was, that was enough for me. I was good. <laughs> it, it was, it was bad. I, I hated what they did with those characters. I hated everything about that movie. Uh, but any who's the point I'm trying to get at is, uh, is star Wars in trouble? That's the question I'm posing is star Wars in trouble. It, it, are they throwing too much at us? You know, it, I went through all of that with the start and going all the way through the movies. You know, there were, there was time between those trilogies. You know, there was, there was time to kind of feast on all of that until we got to the, to these last three, the, the, the sequels, uh, the sequel trilogy, as they call them. And then it started to kick into high gear. That's when they were trying to release a movie every year, you know, with, solo you know the Han Solo movie the prequel which ah, I had so much high hopes for that movie and it just did not deliver um Rogue One was really good Rogue One was probably the best movie that uh Star Wars Lucasfilm and Disney have put out together uh you know uh yeah I, I really can't, I can't think of anything else, uh, that Disney went since Disney has been in control of the franchise that was better than Rogue one. Rogue one was uh, just beautiful. I loved it. I, I put it up there with empire. I, I, <laughs> I really do. And before people blow a gasket, I'm not saying it's better than empire It's not better than empire. I said it's, it's up there with empire. So relax. Anyways, uh, <laughs> uh, Star Wars, uh, Star Wars started putting out a lot of stuff on Disney plus and, as did Marvel and all these other IPs as well. But the Marvel, uh, not Marvel, uh, the Star Wars Disney plus shows definitely haven't been delivered. And, and, and the reason this show is happening today, in case you don't know. I did reviews for the latest Star Wars show that was on Disney Plus, The Acolyte. And The Acolyte, for the first couple of episodes, I was enjoying. I was actually into it. I wasn't super excited about it, but I thought it would pick up at the end and end on a good note that first season, and it didn't happen. And it was a big letdown. The viewership was bad. Uh, the people who were viewing it 
didn't like it. <laughs> they did not like it at all. And I 100% understand. I didn't hate it like a lot of people hated it, but I, I can, I, I can see where, <laughs> where the hatred can come from. I, I just chose to look at the brighter side of things. Well, it was just announced the other day, uh, earlier this week that we would not be getting a season two of the acolyte, even though it was left on kind of a cliffhanger at the end of season one. Well, it's going to continue to hang off that cliff because we would never get to see it. It was officially canceled by Disney plus and it needed to be, <laughs> it needed to be, uh, like I said, I didn't hate it, but that show was a mess. It was such a dumpster fire of a show. It was just written so bad and it had an excellent premise. I felt, but it didn't work out. Um, but it's not the only one not picking on that. The book of Bubba fat didn't work. Um, to an extent, Ahsoka didn't work. Um, the Mandalorian it's good, but the last season, uh, it wasn't the best <laughs> to, to put it mildly. Um, it just haven't worked. And I think it's just a lot. They, people talk about, uh, superhero fatigue when it comes to these comic book movies. I, I, I don't agree with the superhero fatigue, but I do agree with star Wars fatigue. Uh, another one you can throw in there is Obi-Wan Kenobi. That didn't deliver. You know, it, it was just like the acolyte to me. It started off good, good premise and all that didn't end well, didn't deliver at all. Uh, but in 2024, star Wars is increasingly hard to define. It's hard to define the franchise, you know, uh, you knew what the original, uh, 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 trilogy was, you know, you knew what that was. It was a space opera. It, it was an adventure film. It was a throwback to the old serials from the 1920s, thirties and forties and stuff. You know, it was like a space Western. It, it had all that, but wh what is it now? Is it a space opera? Is it a space Western, a sci-fi Western? Is it a, a detective show in space, which I thought the acolyte was going to be. I mean, I don't know what that, I don't know what's going on right now in the star Wars universe in this property, in these shows, uh, you know, and or and or, which is good. It's a good show, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't really put it with star Wars, you know, even though it's connected to rogue one, which I've said is one of the better films to come out um, in this Disney merger with uh, Lucas Films, but the show kind of separates itself. It, it 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 doesn't really deal with Jedi and uh, lightsaber battles and all that other good stuff, but it's more of a grounded story in Star Wars, which is fine. It, it's just it's hard to it's hard to link it with the other shows. You know, it's such a departure from the other shows just like uh rogue one is a departure from the movies you know it 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 links up with uh, a new hope because that that is a you know the prequel to a new hope you know <laughs> that is set before the new hope but in any event the acolyte like many in the past five years addiction addition to the franchise attempts to diverse the narrative scope of the star Wars universe, you know, depicting a mystery, uh, revenge story in space, but the result fell flat. It, it just fell flat on his face. Reason being number one reason why uh, you can, you can name a million and one reasons, but the number one reason why it failed to capture the franchise's magic. It don't have that same magic that we felt when we saw Luke Skywalker, for the first time, when we saw Han Solo, when we saw Chewie, when we saw saw uh, uh, C Creepio and uh, R two D two and Princess Leia, and, you know, it didn't have that magic that that movie had, that the first three films in that trilogy had, and, and that's what's lacking from these shows and these movies. You know, I can remember in vivid detail watching the X Wing tumble into the uh, Death Star Trench and uh, uh, 
other moments, you know, other moments that stay with me, like the quote unquote uh, duel between Obi Wan and uh, Darth Vader, and <laughs> Darth Vader slicing Obi Wan in half, and he he vanished, and me wondering for years, and still wondering to this day, how why did he just vanish? You know, <laughs> where others had, were just cut in half, but that's neither here nor there. Or um, the epic battle going back to the prequel trilogy in Revenge of the Sith. That epic battle between Obi Wan and Anakin before he became Darth Vader. What a battle! That was one of the greatest uh, lightsaber battles in Star Wars. One of there. There's been a lot. There was actually a really, really good one in the Acolyte. Actually, two good ones. To be fair. To be fair, it was two good ones. Just didn't save the show, though. Um, <laughs> but uh, I remember the shock and awe of Vader telling Luke, I'm your father. You know, everybody jaw dropping to the floor. Yeah, I remember uh, Luke getting his hand cut off and it was like, what? You know, the whole the whole film, Empire, Empire Strikes Back, where the bad guys won and 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 for me at that age uh this was the first time i watched a movie and the bad guys won they won you know there was no resolution at the end where the the heroes were victorious everybody lost there uh uh like i said luke got his hand cut off found out that his sworn enemy is his father uh uh Han Solo was frozen in carbonite. Um, Lando was a traitor. You know, all this other good stuff. It was just a hodgepodge of wow in that film. <laughs> and that's how it ended. You know, but let's let's go back to the, let's go back to the Acolyte. You know, the opening scene in the Ac Acolyte gave you hope. It gave you some type of hope. You know, you saw uh, uh, the character of May played by, Amandala Stamberg take on this Jedi master played by Carrie Ann Moss and Carrie Ann Moss. We all know is Trinity from the matrix. She's in a star Wars properties show. She's a Jedi. You're like, Oh man, this is going to be fire. And it was, that fight was awesome. It was so good. And that was it from there. It was downhill from there and should have known something. <laughs> we should have known at that moment that uh it can only it can only go one or two ways up or down and it chose to go down uh it had some good characters in it it had some interesting characters in it or or should i say performances uh, but overall that the show just did not work now let's turn to the dark side of fandom Let, let's turn to the dark side of the uh, star wars fans who really take it to another level yes the stuff has not been doing well it's not living up to our expectation but the hate on actors and you know in these shows and these movies have been ridiculous you know it is not it's not your normal hate it's really sexist and racist hate i mean venom pure venom that has been dishing dished out to these performers and it's so sad it's really heartbreaking to be completely honest with you uh it it it, it hurts me because i'm a fan of star wars and when you when you talk about fandom being this you know taking things to this level you kind of feel bad and guilty at the same time because you kind of linked up with them you know, I was talking to a friend of mine and uh, we were talking about football. And in case you don't know, I'm a huge Saints fan. Uh, if you're a Saints fan, don't forget to listen to the Dome Patrol podcast here on the KB Radio Network as well. But anywho, we were talking about Saints fans and I, we were talking about how delusional Saints fans are or some Saints fans are. And some of the stuff they be saying is so ridiculous. And I'm a lifelong Saints fan. And I told him I feel bad. Because I feel like I have to apologize for stupid stuff like that. The stupid stuff they be saying that is completely ridiculous and they believe it with their whole heart. 
And it's like, man, common sense got to play a part at some point, but it never does. And I feel so bad to be associated with them at times, even though I'm one of them. And it's the same thing here. I hear I have that same feeling. It could be just me that has that uh, curse, I guess you could say. <laughs> when I'm when I'm in it with everybody else, I feel like I'm a part of the group, like we're a family. And that's what fandom is supposed to be. I think we all supposed to be in it to win it. Now, even if the uh, uh, particular property that we're fans of isn't living up to par. You know, we still should have a communal experience. We still should be together with it. You know, not, not, not being hated, you know, not spitting hatred out. And this is what's happening in star Wars. And it's not new. It's always been happening, but it seems like it's worse now, especially with social media involved and all that other good stuff. Uh, but the dark side of fandom has shown an inability to handle specific choices. You know, uh, speaking on, let's just stick here with the acolyte you know a lot of people talk talk about this show oh it's it's lesbians in star wars it's a lesbian star wars show what are you talking about <laughs> i mean what what is the, what what that has to do with anything is nothing sexual about the show yet are there uh uh people from the lgbtq community involved with the show yeah yeah they are i mean the the showrunner is a lesbian but who cares what they gotta do in anything let me let me let me bust some of you bubbles who uh probably feel this way who who hate the fact that the the gay community is involved in this let me let me hit you with something they're involved in everything that you like <laughs> just like for all you racists that can't stand blacks, you know, can't stand, uh, 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 Hispanics or can't stand Asians or whatever the case may be. We're all involved in everything in one shape, form or fashion. So get over yourself. That's it just is what it is. Uh, but that was just a thing. I mean, that was, that was a thing that I heard week to week with the show. And I'm like, what that got to do with the show? Now, the show is not good. You can say the show is not good, but it's not. The show isn't good because uh, a lesbian is the showrunner. That has nothing to do with it. They have bad shows from heterosexual people. I, I can name a million of them. <laughs> so it doesn't matter about your sexuality. That That is the dumbest argument to have. But people actually made this argument. Uh, moving on to another case of this was just flat out racism and, uh, two, two examples, to be honest with you, going back to the last Jedi, they had a character on that, uh, in that movie, can't think of her name, but the actress name was Kelly Marie Tran. She was in the show or uh, in the, in the movie and held a big part in the movie, you know, her and Finn who was played by John v, uh, B, uh, Boyega, they had a connection, uh, chemistry, even looked like it was going to spark a romantic thing. After the release of that film, people went bananas. And I say people, but it was really the Star Wars fandom, once again, not excluding me, who hated her. They jumped online and bullied this young woman so bad she had to get off of social media she had to delete her instagram she had to delete all because it was so much racist and sexist comments directed towards her about that movie to the point you don't even see her in film no more they pretty much scared her out of uh hollywood and what makes it bad what makes it bad and this is where I, i'm mad at lucasfilm and everybody involved, they didn't have her back. They did not have her back because in the follow-up film in Rise of Skywalker, she was barely in it. Actually, like I said, I only seen it once, but uh, in memory serves, I think maybe two scenes she was in, and it was never referenced her relationship with Finn, if memory serves. But I know they didn't continue it on, and that was ridiculous to me. And I'm like, 
this is backlash from that from all of the backlash she was getting and she actually did a good job she actually did pretty good in the film I, I, it was so embarrassing man and i i hate that i i hate when people i just can't stand people like that you know they just spit hate you don't know that girl you a, a woman i'm sorry woman you don't know her you know she has a family she has friends i mean you doing all this it, ah because of a movie it's <laughs> i mean come on you can dislike the movie you can dislike her performance but you don't have to go hard in the paint like that to whereas she had to just just delete all of her social media accounts and basically go into a shell because I haven't seen her in nothing, nothing since then. Another actress more recently was uh, Mogus, uh, Mogus, uh, <laughs> uh, Moses Ingram from uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, black actress. I think did a phenomenal job in the show. I actually liked her performance. I liked her in a couple other things. Just recently, she was in that show with uh, Natalie Portman on, was it Apple TV Plus, I believe? But uh, I can't think of the name of the show. But she was good in that, too. She's a good actress. Oh, my God, the racism. <laughs> the racism she got. And she got death threats. I believe uh, Kelly Marie Tran got death threats as well. Well, I have to go back and check, but it, it, I know for certain Moses, Moses, I keep saying Moses Ingram got death threats. Why? And this was the first episode. It was like, it wasn't even, she didn't even get deep into the character, you know, as far as the, the episodes being released, you know, she had already filmed her stuff, but it's like, why the death threat? This is about Star Wars. You know, this is fan, right? You do know this isn't real, right? <laughs> it isn't like she's doing a biopic about somebody you know personally and uh she just butchers that person uh a legacy no man come on man i mean that is so sad and, and that's a deeper issue with these fans these fans make you just ah what do you want what do you want do you want the old star wars but guess what you're lucky you're in luck you can go on disney plus and watch all of the old star wars movies you don't have to watch the new stuff you know if you just watch stuff to hate it and to uh send death threats at people racist comments at people that what what are you accomplishing I, well i guess they accomplished what they accomplished because those people you can't you don't see them no more well uh, Moses Ingram, she's still working. She's like, I don't care. It, 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 well, I ain't gonna say she don't care, but she, like, life goes on, you know. I, I'm pretty sure she's hurt by it. If she's not, I'm hurt for her, you know. It's it's just embarrassing, man, uh, for fans, quote unquote, to be this way and act in this matter, you know, just because you don't agree with a character. I mean, grow up, people. Uh, but to the fan base like me who watched this as a true fan who loved this IP, who loved this property, you know, it's time to agree that star Wars is a f fantastic part of our lives and that the levels of disdain we've seen from toxic fans is intolerable. It, it's unacceptable. And we need to call it out. We need to call it out and really, <laughs> I ain't going to say, do the same thing that they're doing to other people. You know, these, these actors, you know, jumping online and, uh, spitting hate at them, but call them out. You know, you're quick to cancel people for other stuff. Cancel these fools who, uh, uh, uh especially the death threats, it's sticks and stones, you know, it, calling people names is wrong, is hurtful, and it shouldn't be tolerated either. But the death threats, that's taking it to another level. That's, that's taking it to a whole nother level. And that needs to stop. And so <laughs> the real fans, real people out here, and Catherine Kennedy, say something. You know, Catherine Kennedy, uh, Kennedy the president of Lucasfilm, uh, people need to call this stuff out, man. They really need to call this out. You know, in all fandom, not just Star Wars, but in all properties, whether it's Marvel, DC, 
uh, uh law and order whatever they, <laughs> call all this stuff out man people should not be acting in this matter um but the acolyte serves as a case in point because on one hand many many viewers were campaigning for a second season there were there were people who were calling for a second season and i wouldn't have been mad at a second season of that show you know just to see it wrap up maybe the second season would have been more interesting now that we had all this setup because that's all the first season was just eight episodes of setup <laughs> you know we even saw dark uh uh, uh was it plagueis i believe in one little shot and so if, if and we'll never know what that was all about we'll never know who uh the acolytes uh master was you know and all this other stuff so we, it, it's it, all this stuff is unanswered and so it was a lot of things that i'm kind of upset about that we're not going to get the answers to but i'm not going to lose any sleep over it <laughs> you know it is what it is but it is the end of the acolyte but it's not the end of star wars we still have star wars properties that are coming out we even have one coming out this year later on this year what's left um or at least what's upcoming in the star wars universe in december of this year we're getting star wars skeleton crew which saw the trailer too is on youtube looks interesting it's uh it's from uh oh my god john watts the guy who directed the uh spider-man films the you know tom holland spider-man films and excellently might i add and uh he's directing this or not so much direct I, I think he's directing i don't know if he's directing the entire series but he is the uh, showrunner i guess you could say and this show is like goonies in space goonies mixed with star wars and you know count me in i'm all for that you know <laughs> i would love to see a movie like that or a tv show like that and we're getting this tv show in december uh it, i mean look just because some of these properties some of these shows and movies haven't quite hit the mark doesn't mean that i'm out on star wars i'll never be out on star wars uh, but uh my excitement level is kind of hesitant going forward but I, i'm all for it you know our skeleton crew was coming out this year next year we're getting season two of andor andor season one was pretty good you know I, I i wouldn't say it was the greatest thing on earth but i did enjoy watching it they had some really good episodes uh the whole season wasn't all that good it took a while to ramp up it's a slow burn uh, but it's it's a good show we're getting that second season next year there's a season two of Ahsoka in development. Uh, like I said earlier, there were some good episodes in that show as well. It just, I don't know. It, it Something was missing. I don't know what it was, but something was missing from that show. We got the Mandalorian and Gogru movie that's coming out in uh, 2026. Now, I don't know what that means for the TV show side of the Mandalorian, but we, we're getting this movie. Uh, like I said before as well, I, I love the Mandalorian at first. The first couple of seasons were great to me, and but that last one was kind of like, ooh, I don't know. They kind of, they kind of jump in the shark here. And, <laughs> you know, to have this movie, um i'm not super excited for the movie to be 100 percent honest with you uh, but i'm gonna go see it <laughs> i'm definitely gonna go see it uh let's see let's see how it turns out you know uh maybe the movie uh, uh will redeem the rest of uh th that last season of the mandalorian for me we also have taika with td uh star wars film that's in development now it hasn't been officially announced but every chance he gets taika watiti always states that he's working on it he's almost finished with it and blah blah but he's been saying that ever since 
Thor Ragnarok, I think. After he finished that film, he was talking about the Star Wars film. And, you know, I don't know if it's going to happen, especially after Thor Love and Thunder. I don't think it's going to. I, I, I'm not holding my breath for that movie. And to be honest with you, I never was excited for that when they announced it because I like Taika Ratiti, but Taika Ratiti needs to stay in his lane and <laughs> just don't see him. Uh, Taika Waititi and Star Wars just doesn't mix for me. It's all in water. I, I, I've been proven wrong before, but it, it just it just never sounded right to me. We also have Dawn of the Jedi, a movie that's in development to be directed by James Mangold. And in case you don't know who James Mangold is, he directed Logan. He directed uh, that Johnny Cash movie. He directed... Uh, the last Indiana Jones film, which wasn't all that bad, you know, it just didn't live up to the rest of the Indiana Jones films, but it was, it was decent, uh, but he's directing this Dawn of the Jedi movie. And this movie is set in the high Republic era, I believe. And I'm all for that. I, I've been wanting to see that for years. Also in development, uh, they have, a uh, another new Republic movie. They have, uh, a new Jedi order film, a rogue squadron film that's in development. Um, a Lando TV show, Lando Carissian with, uh, Donald Glover returning, uh, in the role as Lando. I, I'm interested in that, uh, Rangers of the new Republic, uh, TV show. I think that was canceled. I could be wrong, but, uh, that was in consideration. They had a few considerations uh, that were canceled. Uh, the Ryan Johnson trilogy was canceled. He was uh, he was the director of The Last Jedi, of course, and it was supposed to be a separate Jedi-type movie, uh, you know, kind of stemming from how he left The Last Jedi, you know, where there's new Jedi out in the galaxy. And that never came to be Kevin Feige at one point was making a, a star Wars film, but I think that kind of fell through and was canceled. It, it was, it was, it's just a lot, you know, they need to take their time. It's just a lot coming at us. And I feel it's kind of oversaturated. Uh, just a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit. And that's the problem. You're trying to rush out this, these products and not taking your time to develop them. Because, like I said, all of these shows and properties are interesting or have interesting premises. But they are so much in a rush. Unlike in the past where you took your time to develop a show or a movie, you know, uh, 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 made sure all the I's were dotted and all the T's were crossed. And now it's like, let's go, 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 go. And they're just putting out whatever and that's what it feels like sometimes i know the acolyte really felt like that in in some portions of that season it was just like filler episodes uh, they had like two or three filler episodes it felt like and it just the show suffered for it and it resulted in the cancellation uh, but yeah this the state of star wars is is in trouble to put it plainly i I wish I can sit here and be all optimistic, like, oh, it's all right. It will be all right. Once we get this skeleton crew move, uh, TV show, and then we get the uh, Andor season two and all this here. The problem you have in here, not too many people watched Andor like that, you know, and nobody knows anything about skeleton crew. And Ahsoka wasn't super well received as he, uh, as well. So there's a lot coming down the pike that's not fan favorites I, I guess you can say until you get to 2026 with the Mandalorian Gogru movie and to be honest with you that hasn't really hit and it's been so much time in between you probably forgot what's going on and because I'm it's hard for me to remember what what was the last thing that happened on <laughs> the Mandalorian and so it, it's I don't know I don't know. I, I don't know what they would do. Um, I heard a suggestion, a suggestion, or should I say, I uh, read it somewhere that 
you know, somebody somebody suggested that they should recast Luke, recast Han, and just start over. At first, I was like, man, that's blasphemy. <laughs> that is complete blasphemy. No, you cannot touch those. And then I got to thinking. <laughs> and then I went and got to thinking. I'm like, well, that's not a bad idea. You know, it, it, it is not. Is not. The thing with that is, I wouldn't do that now. Eventually, they're going to have to. And this could be years down the line. I could be dead and gone, whatever. But they're going to they're going to reboot this. They're going to start over from formula and, and they're going to recast. And so if that's in the plans, if that's in the works, I would wait maybe about 10 years before you do something like that. Don't, don't do that now because it's still fresh. It's still fresh with Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill's still alive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Harrison Ford is still alive. I mean, you don't want to, don't do it now. You know, and, and I'm not saying in 10 years they'll be dead. I hope they live forever. But I'm just saying, they, you, they, wait, give it some time. That's all I'm saying. Give it some time before you reboot it and recast and, you know, uh, start this all over again. But that, that's just a suggestion. I don't, me personally, you don't need to do the Skywalker story anymore. There are other stories you could tell. It's a galaxy. We're in space. If there are other, they go to multiple planets. There's multiple stories you could talk about or tell in this universe. So it doesn't have to relegate just to the star, uh, Skywalkers. That's just my opinion. Uh, but uh, yeah, my to wrap it all up, the state of Star Wars. Yes, they are in trouble. It has not been clicking, and. I don't know what's going to be their next thing that's going to knock it out the park. You know, I just read out what's coming on the pike for the next couple of years, and none of it jumps out at me as like, okay, this is going to be it. This is this is the this is the property or this is the show, this is the movie that's going to say Star Wars is back. None of those uh, shows or movies scream that to me. But who knows? One may catch fire. It could be Skeleton Crew. We'll see in December. Uh, but I would like to know what what do, what's your opinion of Star Wars right now? It, 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 do you think they're in trouble? Or do you think we just should hang in there, baby? Hang in there. Uh, I would love to know your opinion. Email the show, kbradiopodcast at gmail.com. You can also search for the show on all social media platforms. Just search for the KB Radio Network. Also, don't forget about the KB Radio Network channel on YouTube subscribe and like this video if you don't mind also don't forget about the five stars the reviews and sharing this show if you're listening on apple Podcasts, spotify iheart radio wherever you are currently listening to movie goodness here on the kb radio network everybody thank you for joining me as we talked about the state of star wars want you all to know that i love you Continue to love everyone, and until we speak again, you all be blessed.